This is Peter Rosenthal, head film critic for The Onion. In today's Cinema Classics segment, I'm going to be looking at Steven Spielberg's 1975 film, Jaws, a psychological thriller about a closeted gay man whose fear of coming out to his friends and family manifests itself in the form of a ravenous killer shark. Hailed as the first modern Hollywood blockbuster, Jaws tells the story of small town police chief and severely repressed homosexual Martin Brody. In the movie's opening sequence, a young woman swimming alone is violently attacked by a bloodthirsty great white shark, a shark that viewers quickly realize is actually the physical projection of Brody's paralyzing fear of his own sexuality. In his struggle, Brody is aided by his shipmates Quint and Hooper, brilliantly portrayed by Robert Shaw and Richard Dreyfuss as two men secure in their own homosexuality, evidenced by the fact that their minds never manifest killer great white sharks. The three gay men make many attempts to entrap the creation of Brody's psyche to no avail. When they shoot harpoon lines attached to flotation barrels at the great white, the shark drags the barrels down into the water repression. However, because Brody's desire to sleep with and have relationships with men is so powerful, the barrels always resurface. Never is the thriller's tension more palpable than in the iconic scene featuring the gigantic shark continually slamming his body into the wooden hull. With each and every pound, the physical embodiment of Brody's barely contained arousal for the two men in his company. In fact, when Brody's secret carnal desire for Quint reaches its feverish climax, Brody can no longer control his latent gay tendencies and, in the guise of his shark alter ego, consumes the burly sea captain. In the end, Brody does finally kill the physical embodiment of his sexual repression, sending its bloody remnants sinking to the depths of the sea. He emerges a man, free to pursue a homosexual lifestyle, and swims towards the shore with Hooper, who is all but certainly a future lover. Will modern audiences find the portrayal of closeted homosexuality as a ravenous shark somewhat dated? Perhaps. But for the 1970s, this was an ambitious project. And Spielberg himself was well known for chronicling his own struggles with his homosexuality in nearly all of his movies, whether it was the two gay velociraptors in Jurassic Park or the little girl wearing the red coat in Schindler's List. For The Onion's Film Standard, I'm Peter Rosenthal.